right. Welcome back to the podcast. Thanks for joining me. Audrey Rinlisbacher here. I've got Allie Diebel with me. She has been teaching the Mission Driven Teen for the last few years and had some good experiences with it. So we're going to talk for a few minutes today about her, about her teens, about their experiences together and why it has been impactful and a positive experience. So first, Allie, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, thank you for having me on. I'm excited to talk today. Yeah. Um, I have a background, a degree in psychology and communication, and I've always loved the study of people, of humanity. I think that we're here to learn about each other and to help each other in our experiences and grow together. And I had the opportunity to join as a staff member, as a mentor, a public school, I mean, a private school four years ago. And that's where I teach. I teach the Mission Driven Teen Program, and I absolutely love it. <laughs> that's awesome. So what do you know about why the school adopted the program? Were you part of that decision-making process, or how did that come about? Actually, one of our moms had done the mom program. Okay. She came to our director and said, you absolutely need to have this as part of your program for the teens. So my director contacted me and asked, I had been teaching history, and she asked if I would be willing to look at this program. So we both looked at it and studied it and read all of the books in three months. And, <laughs> and we, awesome. we kind of both, we fell in love. And I said, I think this is... I had actually taught seminary for our church for several, several years, and I just, I saw so many of the good things and principles and skills that we teach in a church class, but taught in a secular format. Mm. And as the deeper I got into the program, I came to really gain an, an, an understanding of the beauty and truthfulness of what was being taught and that it was a program that could change lives. Wow. So we, I said, yes. And she said, let's do it. And we've been wow. doing it for the last, we're going into our fourth year next year. Wow. Wow. So what were, how did, how, tell me about the, about the youth that you're teaching. What are their ages? How many do you have in a classroom? How, how did that, how did that, how has that played out at your school? Well, my very first year, actually, I, we had, I had 26 kids, wow. eighth and ninth grade age, 14 to 16 and 26 kids. It was beautiful, but it was a lot yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to teach, to have the richness of discussion that we needed yeah. to have in yeah. within a time frame. So the last two years I've had 16 students, about 16 each year. Yeah. And that has been a sweet spot. So they're ninth graders. So they usually start at about 14 and turn 15 years old within the year. Mm -hmm. So, and we just, it's such a beautiful, sweet spot with that age group. That's and so we're going to continue to teach it to our ninth grade class. That's awesome. So how, what does it, what does it look like for you? Tell us about maybe a typical day or, you know, how often do you meet? What is, what is the classroom setting? How, how does that look? So we, I get to teach Mondays and Tuesday mornings. Okay. I teach for an hour, about an hour and a half each day. So uh -huh. we're together almost three hours a week. Nice. Um, I have my kids come prepared every week. I've actually split up the reading so that it's, we finish a cycle in within about a month, but like we're supposed to, but we break up the readings a little bit differently to make it very doable for my students. Um, we do sit in a classroom setting. Sometimes it's desks looking at me. Sometimes we circle up, get in a circle for discussion. So we mix it up and it looks different. Um, we always start on Monday mornings with sharing our livets. We share what we learned that week, how we grew, things that we encountered that were positive, and we cheer each other on. My favorite part is having book discussions. And today we had a 30-minute book discussion on the final book of the year, The Rats of Nim. And it mm -hmm. was profound where these kids have come from in the last nine months. Wow. They just, 
I was marking that book faster today than I've ever marked it because I was they had caught all these principles that I had missed and I read it for three years. <laughs> so they're just masters by this time at finding truths and talking about how they're applying in their lives. Wow. Wow. And then we do a lot of fun activities. I create object lessons. They do writing, a little bit of writing. I love to, I've asked them some questions. They watch their videos before yeah. class every week. Mm -hmm. And then the format I've created that works so beautifully to help that information sink in a little bit better is that I then create an essay type format with four to five questions that they'll write a one to two page mm -hmm. essay. Nice. Now, not just spewing back the facts of the video, but processing it in their own lives. Sure. And that has been an impactful process as well. Wow. So how much do you think you use the mentor's guide? Has that been helpful? Have, has it just been a jumping off place? Do, do you follow it very closely? I'm just curious how, if that's been helpful or not. It is, it is a lifesaver. <laughs> Oh, good. <laughs> Seriously. It, and especially when I started and didn't really know what I was doing. Yeah. So, and I still use the mentor's guide. Having done it three years, I now have created some, you know, tweaked a few things that work really sure. well with a, with a group of 16 kids. So I've tweaked a few things, but definitely the, the bones of it, I use every week. I don't think I could do as good of a job that I do without the mentor's guide. Wow. Good. I'm glad that's helpful. So when you say the kids come prepared, what does that mean? How, what do you expect of them when they show up in class? Um, they will, we, we at the beginning of the year talk about reading and marking books and looking for principles and we do that training. Mm -hmm. And then they are expected every week to show up on in my classes with their books in hand, mm -hmm. marked up, written in their thoughts and they're, re they're ready to, to have discussions. They also have read the videos. I mean, sorry, watch the videos and taken notes. I do ask them to take, a, and they're they are very good at, they usually come with one to two pages of notes. Wow. Um, and so they'll pause the videos, process, write notes, write what applies to their lives, because I feel like that is a way to give it, get it into them even deeper. Yeah. And yeah. then we write about that in class as well. So wow. they come having watched videos and read books and they are, I don't have any kids that don't come prepared. They know the expectations and a hundred percent of them come prepared every week. Wow. So I know what people are going to be thinking when they're watching this. <laughs> You're going to be thinking, how in the world are you getting them to be so accountable? What did you, what is the magic formula? Did you sprinkle them with fairy dust? Like, what have you done <laughs> that they're, that oh, they're so goodness. bought in? You know, we, we have, I, I do a fun introduction class at the beginning of the year. Okay. I've actually had past students create cute little fun videos of their testimonials. Oh, and they're wow. all kids that my kids know and look up to. Wow. And so we start kind of there. And then I think over the first three or four weeks, they begin to see the magic of what can happen. Mm -hmm. And when you've got, you know, half your class coming prepared, it doesn't take long. I think peers have more effect often than sometimes we as adults in their lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's, and we, as a class, we set our expectations. They actually set the expectations. I ask a series of questions of what they want our class to look like. So it comes, it's more of an intrinsic way that we do it. And it comes with, from within and it seems to work. So, so when you say they start to see the magic happen, what do you mean by that? What, what, what is that magic? Oh, you know, it, in our first book discussions, you all, you'll, you'll always have a few that just masterfully get this really quick mm -hmm. kids that are ready to read classics and find truths, especially. And my kids, a lot of them come from homes that they've been doing this. Mm -hmm. So I just, as a mentor, as you edify and uplift and speak yeah. words of just, you know, I'm so proud of them and look what they found. And, and it just, yeah. it, just us working together, it kind of evolves and happens really quickly. And they start really buying in. And they start, and my kids buy in. Yeah. They buy in fast. Yeah. 
And for those who may not know, uh, what's included along with, you know, she talked about videos and Livets are applications of principles that they can practice um, throughout the weeks. There's journaling exercises, but there's also principles lists. And so they have a jumping off place. So they have some idea of a concept that they're, that they're looking to find. And then that helps them to identify the way different authors and different people talk about the same kind of thing. And then, and then can help them to brainstorm how they might start living that principle. So obviously there's a huge emphasis in the program on the concept of principles. So what's, what's been your experience with that um, element of it? Why do you care about that? Um, how do you feel like it helps in the classroom and helps the students, I guess, would be my question. The, the concept of principles. Well, I have a really... I ha because of my background with my education and also my career of teaching seminary for our church, I have a, a strong understanding of truth and principles mm -hmm. and what they are. Mm -hmm. And that the closer we live our lives to truth, the happier and easier, not easy, but easier our lives go. It just, mm -hmm. that is just, it's God's law. It's natural law. Like we learn about in level two. And I tell my students, right, we talk, we laugh for the first few months because I tell them the phrase that is such a catchphrase in today's world, you do you. They say, <laughs> yeah, that, that's not really truth, guys. Yeah. <laughs> we don't yeah. really, that isn't the goal to live that way. There is only truth from God and it is God's truth. And our goal is to figure out what that truth is and then to align our lives as closely as possible with, yeah. as we can with that truth. And my kids, my students figure that out really quickly. And we just, as we talk about applications and how it looks in our lives, they gain a testimony of truth really fast. And as we apply it back to scripture, that is really key for my students to see that everything that is taught in my class isn't just these great ideas swirling in the world. Yeah. The scripture and God backs them up every yeah. single time. Yeah. And so that we do that a lot. The first part of class and throughout the year of bringing that back to their standard of truth. Yeah. So what are some changes that you see in your students then? Can I tell they're, you about one of my they're reading things They're They're excited, but, but, but beyond that, what, what, what changes do you see? I mean, it sounds like they're better scholars. It sounds like they're, they're, they're digging deeper in their, in their education, which would excite a lot of, you know, parents and mentors and teachers, but Audrey, my kids are different kids by the end of the year. I have one student, her, I, she's a young lady. She's, she just has blown me out of the water this year. She came in, she comes from a really hard background mm. and we started the year that her classmates didn't like her. She was kind of, kind of a little bit of a bully because of the situation she had come from. And about two months in, and I have individual mentor meetings with these kids as well, which is so important. So we meet together about every other month individually for about 15 That's minutes. Awesome. And about two months in the program, this young lady said to me, this could change my life. And I want a different life. Wow. So she has embraced a hunt. She has given 150%. And that young lady has 15 new best friends this year who have watched her grow. And not only that, but as we've talked about principles and application and the space to allow each other to grow, yeah. they have allowed that growth and her to change without seeing her as this, as the same person and an object. Wow. I mean, everything is so, once you do the program, everything makes sense and all these principles align and they're perfectly foundationally built upon each other. And she has done a 180. I have other students who have, you know, they face hard things or they're going through different things, but a hundred percent of my students come out of this different people, different levels yeah. and different, and they're in different places. So we talk about how different principles are going to apply to them in different ways and they'll pick and choose what works for their lives and what they need at this time. But all of them are different people nine months later in very Christ-like grown up mature ways living principles at a higher level they are different in a very good powerful way and they also have a 
incredible understanding that they're on earth for a purpose Mm -hmm. and that they, and they begin to do life mission. They begin to see it. They, we talk about it in class. They come away with a vision of who they can become and they are on fire to become that people, those people. And I just, I get to, I get to be a witness of their lives and it's my favorite thing in the whole world. (laughs) Oh, that's so incredible. So we haven't talked very much about the mission component. Tell me about the life mission component. How, what about that speaks to them? How do they, how do they feel about all of that? Do they just at first, you know, think it's not possible for them or, I mean, I don't know. I'm not even sure what to ask here. Just what, what thoughts do you have around the life mission? element you know it all just comes together so beautifully in that introduction section mm-hmm. um they, my kids loved the video on character talking about ben franklin as a youth and his change as he discovered how to live a, a mission life they love little britches they love the they've already all read the hiding place at our school so they come with an incredible foundation for your book because you reference the Ten Boom family so well and so beautifully. And my kids come with that foundation. If they didn't, I would actually have them read it before yeah. we even started your classes like a summer project. Yeah. So they come prepared for that. And they just, it doesn't take long. Mm. And, and we talk about big missions and we talk about small daily missions and those ideas. And that God, if we're listening, he'll help us know how to bless people throughout a day's journey in their mission and ours. And as we share Livets, they just begin to catch a vision. They begin to see that they've got a great work to do. Yeah. And we, my class is a very safe place. We talk about that at the beginning of the year. It's a safe place where we are vulnerable. We share our wins. We share our not so great wins. (laughs) I share with them. I do this journey with them every year and I'm very open I'm struggling with this in my life or this person in my life. And I'm struggling not being in the drama cycle. And, and, be, and because of my willingness to be vulnerable and open, yeah. they are willing to be vulnerable and open with each other. And as they see this in each other, it creates, again, this vision of who they individually can become. Yeah. Because they're watching the rest of us do it as well. Yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. What about the self-discovery activities and discussions? I what think my I think my kids will tell you it's their favorite part. Yeah. <laughs> they they would do self-discovery every week, actually. <laughs> they love it. And it's worked really good. We have school Chromebooks. We actually during during class. We oh. spend Mondays. We get out all of our Chromebooks and they go to the websites or wherever we are taking the assessments, the tests, yeah. and we do it in class. And then we always follow it up with discussions and activities and, you know, who's like who and who's different and, and the uh, goodness and, and why are we different this way and the personalities and they have, lo- that's been a highlight for all of them learning about who they are. And then they refer to it the rest of the year. Yeah. Well, my intelligences are this and my strengths are this and, and they use it later in projects that we do in class and to as we just talk and it it is I think it's one of the most important things they walk away with actually that's wonderful so as we as we finish up here I'd love to hear a couple things first of all what you would tell other parents or mentors about why they might want to consider it or advice you would have for them as they do it some of those thoughts and insights and then finish up with a couple of your favorite moments. I I have to say that when I first, very first started looking at it before I started teaching, I was like, this is, this is great stuff, but is it really going to affect and change lives? Yeah. I had no idea, no idea until I've now done this three years with three beautiful groups of souls who are better and have become um, become more on the path that they're supposed to be on yeah. as meant as a mentor it's worth the hard days because you know they're we're, I'm a human and they're a human <laughs> yeah 
it's worth the the days that don't seem to and it's worth finishing because it just builds on each other and then it culminates and I don't know another word to describe it than magical it's a spiritual journey and I also didn't expect it to change my life the way it did I'm a different person and I taught seminary for a decade before I'm in scripture and truth for hours a day my life is good as I study truth and live as a follower of Christ and this program every year I grow and am, am in different and two am different at the end of the year yeah. because I'm in taking this class as well that's a beautiful thing about classics you just can learn from them yeah from and, and and we're in different right. stages every year yeah different different things we're facing one of my favorite moments this year I had a student from t- my very first year of doing this so three years ago two years ago and she sent me she's moved to California and she sent me a video message she said I just want to share with you what's going on in my life and how the things I've learned are helping me get through this hard thing right now Mm -hmm. and she testified of the truths and principles and I watched and just cried Mm -hmm. my other my favorite moment one of my favorite moments from the show that I just had I have a young man in my class who he he would rather be playing hockey (laughs) than sitting in my class some days but he's a beautiful beautiful soul and they do they my kids do four projects a year they spend a couple of weeks working on each project and then they present projects Nice. And one of the projects they do is they do a final big project with art and posters and all of their favorite things they've learned about themselves so far this year mm-hmm. and where they feel like they are on their mission driven life path at this mm-hmm. point. Mm-hmm. So he, he made me cry. He stood up with this incredible poster with a list of all the things that he should be doing in life. And he had one column that he had marked off the things he had already been doing. And there were about five things marked. And then as he talked about our class, he said, this is everything I'm doing now. And he began to check 20 more boxes. And I'm now reading my scriptures and I'm taking care of myself physically. And I am seeing people as people and not objects. And the whole class was just silently in awe. And I, I did, I wept and to see a young man that would sometimes rather be other places who has given it his best and changed and grown in very important ways. Yeah. And there's a million more, but those are two of them. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. That's beautiful. Well, is there anything else you'd like to share as we finish up? I just love I love mission driven teen I honestly it, I I know that it was inspired I we talk a lot in my home about how God inspires people in the world to fulfill life missions and to create Handel's Messiah or Victor Hugo's Les Mis and I feel like sorry I would add Audrey mission driven teen I have a testimony that this came through you from our Heavenly Father to bless the lives of those that would come in contact with this program in very profound ways. I have seen it. I am a witness of it. And I am so grateful that I get to continue this journey for hopefully a really long time with many more souls. Thank you, Ali. (laughs) That's very humbling. I'm so grateful that it's had so much impact with your youth. That's it just fills me with joy. Thank you for spending a few minutes today sharing your experience. You've become a mission driven teen expert at this point, master mentor. We need to give you some kind of medal, but it's so it's such a joy to hear about what's happening in your school and hope we can get the message to more people that this is a, an option for them to to help adge- this this generation be better prepared for the challenges that they're going to face and um, be closer to their God and, and closer to truth to be more grounded. So, 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 so grateful for everything that you're doing. So grateful that you joined me today. 
you're just a beautiful light and grateful for all you're doing. Thanks for joining me, everybody. If you have more questions or thoughts, need more information about the Mission Driven Team, go ahead and go over to audreyrenlessbacher.com to, um, to contact us and send me an email. Let me know how we can answer any questions you might have about the program. And thanks again for being here, Allie. See you next time. Thank you.